It's Lauren here from The Thinking Closet, and it has been a little over three months since I first started pouring my heart into the margins of my Crossway ESV journaling Bible. And to say that it has revolutionized my Bible study experience is an understatement. My introductory blog posts this spring just were met with such enthusiasm and some really great questions. So I thought it might be worthwhile to do just a little flip through video tour of my first 10 entries. And my hope is that this might serve as an inspiration to some of you who might also be at the beginning of your journey into this form of art worship. Or if this is a new concept for you, maybe it will just open you up to all the possibilities that exist for engaging with scripture. So I will say before we crack this baby open that with these first 10 entries, it's been in a highly experimental phase for me, just trying out lots of different mediums and exploring different techniques, which of course means embracing mistakes lots of them and actually that's a really great segue to dive into my very first entry my permission pages which are right here at the start Um, i actually dedicated an entire post to sharing these pages and my reasoning behind why i created them so i'll have a link to that post in the video description But basically, I decided that if I wanted to free myself of perfectionism and allow this experience to be one of true artistic freedom, I needed to make a bold beginning. And I needed to declare what this Bible is for and what this Bible is not for, and also what might happen on these pages. And thus the permission pages were born. It was an extremely valuable exercise for me. I would recommend it to anyone who might have a journaling Bible, but might be feeling too paralyzed to even start. Because once you declare that this Bible is for sloppy handwriting and making mistakes, and that it's not for showing off my mad art skills, with a Z, then the pressure's off. And then it can become just a really sweet time of meditation on God's word. Now, um, I'm going to jump around and show you my pages in chronological order. So that means we will be jumping from the New Testament to the Old and back again. There's really no method to my madness. Um, Sometimes I will explore a favorite passage. Other times it's like a song lyric that will lead me to scripture or a quote from a book. And other times I allow my art supplies to inspire me. There's no telling what will spark an idea for my next entry. I decided to go big or go home with my very first scripture entry, and I busted out the acrylic paints. Shauna Noel, who is sort of the founder of the Illustrated Faith Movement, has developed a really great technique for applying paint thinly to your Bible pages, and that's using a gift card or a credit card. You're just going to literally put it on thinly with that card. And I ended up using some of the pages in the back here as a tester page just to sort of get used to that technique. And then once I was comfortable, I stuck a piece of cardstock behind this page just to protect the other side, and I went to town. (laughs) Now, it may be hard to tell on film, but all of the text here is still visible to me, which was important to me. And then I used a mix of stickers and cutouts and doodles and handwritten text to create my layout. You'll also see that I used here my um, self-inking date stamp just to mark each date on all my pages, otherwise I would quickly forget. Here is an example of a layout that was inspired by a sticker. 
This mason jar with the little sweet label was just so darling that it inspired the rest of this design. And it worked perfectly with a Bible verse that had already been on my mind after reading Sarah Hagerty's book, Every Bitter Thing is Sweet. Every Bitter Thing is Sweet. You'll also notice that I tab all of my pages with like a word or phrase that can sum up the theme of that passage. And I have them all on the top edge so you can see them when the Bible is closed, like so. Some are made using washi tape, others using cardstock. I have a tab punch that I use sometimes that makes the job really easy. The hardest part for me can sometimes be just distilling down a passage to like a single word or phrase, but I like the idea that if I need a reminder about God's grace or about having trust in the Lord, the tabs can take me to a scripture passage that will speak to that. I've also seen tabs with verse references too. So I would recommend just tabbing your pages in a way that fits how you engage with scripture. Now here is a fun one where I incorporated all sorts of new mediums. I did a little bit of Mr. Huey's misting spray right here. Then that helped me highlight the text. I also worked in some of these enamel dewdrops from Freckled Fawn as well as a tag. But I remember that this was a piece of text where I did not do a rough sketch of my layout in advance like I usually try to do, and I ran out of space with this Jen Hatmaker quote. But thankfully, I hadn't glued down my gift tag, so I was able to tuck the grand finale behind it. Booyah. This is a great example of how mistakes can sometimes be great opportunities to think outside the box and get creative. Oftentimes, I find that the outcome can end up even better than if it had gone without a hitch. So, lesson learned, don't freak out when you make a mistake. One of my favorite places to go for inspiration is Instagram. It's where I discovered this really powerful John Acuff quote. And it's also where I found some of these little doodle inspirations over at Bumble and Bristle. Sometimes I will just grab my phone and search the journaling Bible and illustrated faith hashtags and just see what jumps out at me. This Entry was my first foray into watercolor. Yes, this is all watercolor. I just kept the water to a minimum, and there was really little to no bleed through on the other side. You can only just see a little bit of darkness from my Studler pen. Here is one that was inspired by my little rolling feather stamp that I got on clearance at Hobby Lobby. And I decided that I wanted to actually write out the NIV translation to this verse since the ESV version used the word pinions instead of feathers. And I don't know about you, but pinions is not a regular word in my vocabulary. <laughs> um, another fun fact, is that I have worked on the vast majority of these pages alongside a friend, or in this case, family. My mother-in-law, sisters-in-law, and I enjoyed a girls' weekend together this April, and we spent a few hours of our Sunday morning in art worship together. When I work in my journaling Bible with friends, it's usually a very quiet time, minimal conversation, possibly with music playing, and we all work independently at the same table sharing supplies. It's pretty great. So I was clearly inspired by the chalkboard style with this layout, although I ran into a bit of trouble, first with the paint spilling over the bounds onto the text. And then I had a little bit of trouble with the white paint pen that I used. It actually started to stick 
to the opposite page. I don't know if you can see, it's a little bit mangled over here. So I ended up just to solve the problem, ran a clear strip of packing tape down the edge just to prevent further sticking. But if anybody knows of a non-sticky white paint pen, please let me know. Also, I'll point out here that some of my favorite alphabet stickers to use are these little label letters by Tim Holtz, um, Ideology. They are fantastic because they're tiny enough that you can actually tackle longer words in your margin without them spilling over. Plus, they've got a little bit of a retro vibe, and I love that they can match any color scheme. I'm a big fan. Now, this was my first page trying out my Faber-Castell gelatos in pastel. Ooh, ah. If you've never heard of these before, they are acid-free pigment sticks, and they're magical. They glide onto the page like butter, and you can leave them as they are, like I did, or you can even take a wet brush to them and they become like watercolors. I really loved working with them. I can still see the text through the gelatos, no problem at all. And I'm really excited to experiment with them even more. Now, before we move on, I feel like I need to share this little tidbit because it has happened to me several times and chances are it will happen to you too. But a part of what is so wonderful about this style of Bible journaling is that it gives my thinking brain a rest. It is really so therapeutic. But that also means that I'm prone to misspellings and word mix-ups. Prime example, with this lyric from the song Oceans by Hillsong United, I wrote at the bottom here, wherever you would lead me, you know. Not a huge mix up, but enough that it really bothered me. So I had to go back in and fix it with this little cardstock overlay. But again, it ended up really accenting those last two words. And I think it ended up a better design in the end. So if you find yourself regressing in your grammar, spelling, and punctuation skills, don't worry. That's totally normal. I find that it does help to pre-write your text just on a piece of scrap paper, put it right beside the Bible, refer to it often. But if you don't, it's not the end of the world. Now, this is the first entry I did where I embraced a double page layout. And let me tell you, it was fun. I just love how this one looks with all the branches splayed out over the pages, the roots on the bottom. Now this tree was 100% inspired by another tree drawn by Kayla Makes Art on Instagram, but it really gripped me and it looked like a doable design. So I just sharpened up my colored pencils and it slowly but surely built my tree. Just to give you all a sense of time investment for these, I tend to work really slowly. Each of my pages might take me one to two hours, and this one, if we're honest, took more like three. And that's why I only have about 10 entries in three months, but it's a really worthy time investment for me. Coloring in this tree, I have to tell you, was like the most peaceful part of my week. And this scripture from Jeremiah 17, just has such significance for me now. So there's that. Designs can be much simpler too. It's amazing what you can do with alphabet stickers. My mom actually did a really cool layout for her first journaling Bible entry using magazine clippings and stickers. It was awesome and it required zero drawing skills. So if that's what's holding you back, let me just reaffirm that this is not an art contest. It's really an opportunity just to engage with scripture in a new way. And there are so many ways to go about it. So come one, come all. So I recently went through Stephanie Ackerman's Born to Bloom devotional, which inspired my entry for this week. And the kit actually comes with some of her hand lettering stamps. And so I put those to good use in this layout, just atop some red and pink acrylic paint. 
Fun fact, usually my stays on stamp ink will bleed through to the other side of the page, but when stamped atop a thin layer of paint, there was really minimal bleed through on the other side. I also really loved how smoothly my Faber-Castell big brush pen just wrote right atop the paint. So I will definitely be bringing these supplies back together again for a little reunion in the future. So this concludes the video tour of my first 10 journaling Bible entries. I am really excited just to continue to fill up this Bible with more art journaling, watch it grow thicker and more worn. This has really been exactly what I needed to encounter scripture anew and express what I'm learning in my own language of doodles and paint splatters and washi tape. There's also an incredibly vibrant community of Bible journalers out there who each have their own unique style and mode of expression. And if watching this video ignited something in you, even if you've never really studied the Bible before, I would encourage you to follow that spark. See where it leads. You don't even need an actual journaling Bible with space in the margins. There's a lot you can do with adding in overlays, which is similar to this concept right here. Heck, you don't even need to do this in a Bible. You know, just a blank notebook would do. Just setting aside a few minutes in your day to dive into the text and see where your pen or paintbrush leads you it can really change the course of your day, your week, better yet, your life. And I have a hunch it will be an adventure that you do not regret. So thank you all so much for taking time out of your day to just enjoy this little flip through video tour with me. I had a ball. A transcript from this video with links to supplies and resources and passages I mentioned will all be on the blog. So check out the video description for that link. And if you would like to stay in the loop on future journaling Bible updates, you can follow me on Instagram at Thinking Closet, subscribe to my email newsletter, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Lastly, I would just love to know what you thought of this video tour and if you would like to see another one after my next 10 pages. Also, if I were to do a follow-up post related to my journaling Bible, what are you hungry for? Or what burning questions do you have? Would it be helpful to watch a video of me walking through the process of creating an entry? Would you like tips on how to journal with a friend? Are you curious about more supplies? Do tell in the comments section below, then go forth and let your creativity splish, splash, and spill, especially in the margins. Bye, friends.